All right, so today we are going to go over the rest of lesson six. So those are pages 84, 85, 86, and 87. And yesterday you guys learned about the first settlement, which was Roanoke. And then we left off talking about Jamestown. And as you read today, you started reading about John Smith and Pocahontas. And you guys might have already known who they are because you probably saw the Disney movie Pocahontas and you could kind of compare the movie to what we're reading about. Some of the things are actually true that they said in the movie, but some things they weren't exactly correct on. And as you read about John Smith, he was captured by American Indians and they took him to their chief. And according to John Smith, they were about to kill him when the chief's daughter Pocahontas saved his life. And um, during that time after Pocahontas had saved John Smith's life, uh, Pocahontas ended up visiting Jamestown and helping out their colony and they started trading with each other. And eventually John Smith became the leader of the colony. He was a very strong leader and people followed what he said and he helped to make sure everyone was um, able to survive because more and more people wanted to go to Jamestown over from England and there wasn't a lot of food to support them so john smith was just the leader they needed during that time but unfortunately um john smith got hurt and he had to go back to england and um pocahontas's tribe didn't want to trade with them anymore because they were trading because they had a good thing going with john smith but he left um, so what happened after that was a guy named John Rolfe came and he eventually married Pocahontas and that was a good thing because they were able to trade again with the tribes and um, also John Rolfe he had started to grow tobacco and remember in the beginning of the Jamestown reading they're talking about going to North America to find gold and they never really they never found gold but what John Rolfe did was he started to grow tobacco and that became kind of like their gold, their kind of their money maker. So it was really good that John Rolfe started doing that because it gave them more money. Um, so during this time in 1614, John Rolfe, he married Pocahontas and it was a good time. So remember what I was talking about in social studies, when people start meeting their needs, they start meeting, um, getting food, getting shelter. And once that happens, once people's needs get meet, they are able to focus on more things. So during this time, um, Jamestown was growing and changing. So they started having sort of a government and this government was a representative government, and this was a form of government where the citizens elect the leaders to make decisions on their behalf. So in England, we know that we have a monarchy, which is someone who has absolute power. It was a king or queen that had absolute power. And with this government, they actually, the citizens had some say, and they picked a leader to make their decisions on their behalf, which is totally different from England and this was kind of the start. You remember we learned about it in our last chapters about how you know we were fighting against England and we had a war and everything because we wanted freedom. This was kind of the start of a government that the citizens had some say. And down here, this definition of democratic, you've heard of that before. It's relating to a form of government in which people have the power to rule themselves, often through an elected person. So, since their needs were getting met, they were able to focus on how they were living and living a better life and having people make some decisions, not just from the king, but from the people who were living in that area. So, that leads us to Plymouth. And Jamestown was the first successful English settlement in North America which is a big deal. So Plymouth, this was the third settlement. And what people wanted to do was they wanted to get away from England. King James I was saying that everyone in England had to belong to the Church of England. 
But some people refused. Some people wanted religious freedom. They wanted to be able to go to their own church and learn their own things. So this group of settlements, and they're going to be known as the Pilgrims, sailed, sailed on the ship called the Mayflower and landed in what is now called Massachusetts. So these people were different. They wanted to get away from King James, not to get rich, but to have religious freedom. And we know now that in America, we have the right to choose whatever religion we want to do and study for. So we're very fortunate. So this group really changed things. They wanted to be able to learn their own religion and go to a church independently from what King James was saying. Um, so these people went over in a Mayflower and they decided that when they landed in Massachusetts that they wanted to write down a set of rules called the Mayflower Compact. And these are a set of rules written by the pilgrims to help them live together peacefully. We know that we need to make rules in order for people to follow them. And they knew this. They knew if they wanted to be successful, they needed to make up a set of rules to make sure that they all lived together peacefully. So at first, the pilgrims had it rough. Um, they weren't really doing quite well, as you read. And um, they really needed some help. So an American Indian named Squanto taught them in how to plant food and catch fish. So this an American Indian called Squanto, he had learned English previously from other people and he was so nice and he decided to help out these pilgrims, which that's what they're called, pilgrims, the people from England, and um, they, he decided to help them and teach them how to fish and teach them how to plant food so they could survive. So Squanto was an amazing American Indian who helped out these settlers. Um, so Eventually, they, uh, Squanto and his tribe, decided that since they had such a good feast and a good um, season, so they planted a lot of stuff in the summer and the spring, and in the fall, they decided to get together. And they decided to have a three-day feast. And that three-day feast is what we know as today as Thanksgiving. So this was kind of the story of how Thanksgiving began. And so the pilgrims, which were the people that came over from England, from England and the American Indians decided to get together and have a feast together. And they came together and they ate and they decided during this, thing, this time that they weren't going to fight each other and they would also protect each other from other people that may try to mess with them. So... Now you guys kind of know the story about how Thanksgiving began. And that's all about the Plymouth settlement. And then here's our summary right here. So we learned about three settlements. We learned about Roanoke, that Roanoke didn't wasn't successful. It was a mystery of how they disappeared. And then we had our second second settlement, which was Jamestown, and they were our first successful place. And then we learned about Plymouth, which was for religious freedom. So those were the three settlements that you learned about. 